Hello, citizens of the internet, and welcome to the Dad's Guide to Minecraft. Let's play. Well, today we are going to build something a little bit controversial. We are going to build an iron farm, but not just any iron farm, a pillager powered underground iron farm. So we need pillagers, which I have a couple of. We need villagers, which I have a infinite villager breeder, uh, ethical infinite villager breeder. If you haven't seen that episode, um, I will leave the uh, link in the description below. And we are going to need building materials and a space, which I've already cleared out. So if building a pillager powered iron farm sounds like a plan, then let's get started. Okay, let's go check out our pillagers first thing. So we got two back here in the garden. You know, pillagers like to get in my garden. And uh, when they do, I, I like to tame them. If you want to see how to tame pillagers, I have a video and I'll put that card on the screen and a link in the description below. But this is Cole right here. And this is his buddy over here, um, Ash. Cole and Ash are going to be our pillagers that power this iron farm. And we will get them down after we get our villagers over here, which we are going to do right now in the form of a montage. Okay, that was fun. Uh, moving villagers can always be just an interesting little exercise in patience. But that's not why we're here. We're here to go check this out. This is gonna, where the iron farm is going to be. So there's our slime farm storage right here. And we have our iron farm set up right here. And it'll fill, you know, a decent amount of this space. Not all of it. Uh, but I wanted to make sure we had enough to build... Uh, around inside here and this you know this little guy he escaped and I had to cord him off here but we'll, we'll get him up into his little villager cell once we get done and those two holes up there um, are in that area where the villagers are waiting right now and so I'll be able to make ways for them to drop down uh, maybe minecart them down or something but that's that's why it's like that and right here this is going to be the center of our uh, iron farm build uh, these these blocks right here. So let's go take a look at some of the materials we'll need for this build. I got um, nine hoppers and six chests. We're gonna use those right off the bat. And I also have a uh, green carpet, we'll use that. Um, plenty of glass. Um, I have smooth stone. We will use a, a ton of smooth stone and smooth stone slabs. We have some water buckets, a bucket of lava, six beds, six of any kind of villager, um, crafting table or, or villager or um, occupation block. Um, it doesn't matter. I just did. I had tons of um, flint. So I did uh, fletching tables, two spruce trap doors, and then we're going to make an ethos hopper clock for part of this. So we need the components for that. I'll do a, a demo on how to do an ethos hopper clock um, a little bit later. Some signs, some trap doors. We may or may not need those just, just in case. And then two sticky pistons. And I've never been a sticky piston on screen before, but now that we have a virtual unlimited amount of slime being produced right next door. Uh, stick, sticky pistons, uh, not an issue. So it's just a piston and a slime ball. It makes a sticky piston. So with that, let's go ahead and get this base down. And I think what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and put our chest down and our hoppers going into them and then our, uh, our rugs on top of the hoppers. And I like to just have... Um, We'll do uh, you know two or three double chests like this, and we'll have our hoppers going into each one like in a line, like this. So you you crouch click again to make the make them all connect along this way and dump into here. You can have this all feed into one double chest if you want. I like having um, a lot of options here because if I went over and showed you the amount of slime that's being produced, um, it's it's crazy. So. We might have a lot of iron being produced and we also have uh, poppies that will be produced in this farm. So let's go ahead and crouch click and put our carpet down. And, and this is the carpet from our um, our slime farm. You know, I, th I think I am gonna just take a second and show you the slime farm changes that I did because I forgot to cover that. 
Um, I did make some changes to the slime farm. It was working fine, but as you advance in games, sometimes it's better to um, make, oh, hello there. He sees me now. Um, it's important to make some changes to the overall design to make it more efficient. So I took out the um, cactus and I put in these magma blocks. And what happens is the, the slimes will bounce towards the golems. They'll land on these. They'll keep on dying and, and you know turning into the smaller slimes. And then the, um, the minecart will just go back and forth with the hopper inside of it pick up everything that's being dropped on top of these and drop them into this chest. Now, now check this out. I mean, come on, this is broken. This is broken, it, it's crazy. I'll never use as much slime. Um, unless I build something completely out of slime blocks, but I mean, it's crazy. So for a server with lots of friends, having something like this would be a good idea. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't know. Maybe if you're building lots of redstone contraptions and flying machines and stuff like that, um, it's, it's good for that, but um, for me, I, I just don't see it happening. So let's go ahead and put this back in here. And I mean, look at all right. I already have just tons of slime. So this is the basis for our little iron farm. And what we're going to do is on top of these right here, let's grab our glass and our smooth stone. We're going to build kind of an outline around this. And I, I like to have glass in here so I can kind of see what's going on. Uh, we don't need, we can fill up this like this right here. So we, we end up having somewhat a structure like this and these can go straight up. And we just need it to go up enough that there's space for lava. So if we put the like signs on this level right here that I'm standing on, that'll block the lava from coming down one more and hitting this. We can even do one higher if we wanted to. It, it doesn't really matter. And then glass we can use to fill in across the top as well. Let's see if we can do it right here. All right, I'll have to go down and do the, the bottom part of that, but um, right there. So we can see what's happening inside. And I think what I'll do is I'll put, yeah, the sign right here. The lava will be sitting on top of the sign. That way, uh, the lava blade itself, the golems when they fall down, they will hit the uh, lava up here in their head and that'll continue to burn them, but it won't melt the drops that are down here. And, and you may have seen you know, people build these um, a lot. They're, they're a very popular thing to build on um, YouTube videos. This one is a little bit different because I am using tame pillagers and a, a slightly different design uh, than uh, what I've seen uh, from other YouTubers, just, just because I, I don't really like um, having the zombies if we can not have zombies. It'd be cool to have the tame pillagers down here. So we're gonna leave uh, one of these open right now so we can put our um, little signs in here. Yeah, okay, cool. So let me grab the signs and we'll keep on going. And this is one of those things where you have, um, you know, signs, wood signs, you know, should absolutely be burnt by lava, but uh, they they are not. So if that ever changes, then uh, hopefully they come out with metal signs or, or something for us to hold up lava. But you basically just crouch and click and uh, make them come all the way across. And the golems, and you know, people can walk through these, uh, the entities, the golems can fall through here, but the lava is gonna sit right above here and it'll it'll burn the golems when they fall down. Go ahead and build a little pathway up and just continues going up a little bit more. And like I said, we don't have to go too much higher. We just want enough so that the water, when it's coming in, um, we can stop it from going into the lava. So I think, Maybe this is all we need to come up right here. So let's put down one more level of glass and we'll do um, our stone across like this. So let's do, just put down the glass first like that. And then we'll do this cross here. And you might hear the villagers occasionally, they're right above us or this dude right over here too. Okay, uh, yeah, maybe one more, we'll go up one more. Just so we get we get um, a couple more we get a little distance between us and the floor. 
this should be plenty um, of height. So, oh, all right, I have to go get this. All right, well, I'm gonna continue to build this up just a second and then I'll be back once we move on to the next step. Okay, so right off of here, we're gonna go ahead and extend the um, platforms out and let's go ahead and use slabs for this and we'll just put them down um, off of here. And this is where the pillager and the villagers are gonna stand. So it's gonna be a wall here. The pillager is gonna stand right in here. There's gonna be a block here that's gonna separate it from the villagers. And then we'll need our workstations like this, a space for folks to stand, and then beds. So let's go ahead and put the beds down like this. And that should be enough like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll extend the um, the overhang one more back. So when the water flows, it flows down to the edge above here. And we'll do the same on this side too. So we have our places like this. And let's go ahead and use glass again. And we'll go ahead and build up a wall right here. Um, too high should be fine. And we'll do it on this side too. And I do this, I do it with glass just so we can see everything that's going on inside uh, these areas. And that way we know what's happening uh, with our, um, our little dudes inside if there's uh, problems and we uh, need to, uh, to address those things, those issues. So we have a, a well-functioning little iron farm. And we'll go ahead and fill these corners in too. And I think then what we'll do next is I'm going to extend glass around the outside like this so we can see in here what's going on. I'll have to come out and if you crouch and, and back up on here, you can get the, the corners like this. And we're gonna end up having to put like a something down like it they shouldn't spawn on glass but just in case we'll, we'll go ahead and put um you know some slabs on the on the top part of this so we we, we uh coordinate off so there's no uh spawns taking place and we'll go ahead and do this on the other side as well no i think this is fine and then we'll go ahead and put a layer down like this and this will be the layer with the water that comes off and drops the golems into here so uh, this is two above, so the villagers and, and uh, pillagers should be absolutely fine inside. So let's come across like this. And this will be the spawn location for our golems. And we'll come out one more above it, uh, since it can be a total of eight with the, the water. And I'm using um, solid blocks instead of slabs, just because um, if you're not careful, you can accidentally cause the the slabs to waterlog and shoot water all down below it and that's not fun oh, i'm out of stuff again all right well i'm gonna grab some more i'm gonna finish this on both sides and then we'll we'll do the uh, exterior as well ah uh, you know what i just realized um before we build too much more on here we actually have to get the pillagers and the villagers down in here and get these chambers set up before we do the the top part so let's go ahead and first get this guy up here. And also I need to light this up. Uh, I forgot to do that and we, I got some uh, glowstone blocks. So we'll go ahead and pop those down as well. Uh, but we need to get this guy up there uh, stat as well. So let's let's go ahead and I'll, I'll light this up up here and then I'll um, I'll build a structure to get him into here. And then uh, I'll cut back once that's done. Okay, that was harrowing. Um, I don't know how much health this guy has left. I should probably hit him with like a potion of healing or something like that. But um, we got this up here and let's go ahead and I'll put some slabs down uh, on top of here like this so he can't get out. 
this direction. I should probably go around and just go ahead and fix this on the other side too. Although he couldn't get out over here, actually. Yeah, okay, I'll leave it like that for right now. Um, mainly because I don't want, um, I don't want, as I add the villagers down in here, uh, them to get out and cause all sorts of problems. So uh, this, this at least will allow me to move them down into here. And I could, well, I don't think I want to do that yet. And I trapped myself, that wasn't too smart. Um, I think what I want to do next is get the villagers down here through these holes. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, I should leave that down there like that and then I'll drop them down. Um, I'll have these ladder or the uh, the rails come down uh, from up here down into here and I can move them down one at a time or I could even now that I'm thinking about it, I could probably just have water. That might work actually better if I make a water stream. So let's go ahead and try that and I'll do that and uh, show you how that looks. Okay, so the idea is that water, I'll, I'll make a water fall come down here and uh, or just down here and it'll push the land in it and it'll push them around into here. And, and this should this should work. Uh, let's let's see if it does. I do have water, so. Let's go ahead and try this real quick. Pushing them around. Good, I didn't accidentally drown this guy. That's a that's a bonus since I've, <laughs> I've not been doing too great with my dude down here. There we go. Look at that, that totally worked. I, Yeah, I got them both down here, that's awesome. Now we can go ahead and drop the beds down and I thought what I'd do is do um, two of the uh, yellows, and, or two of the blues and one of the yellows in each one of these. And I think I'm going to need to actually, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I wanna put them facing this way, I think. Yeah, like this. So we have their heads towards the pillager. Okay, can I get the yellow bed down here? Let's see. Yep, cool. There we go. Nice. They're all working. They're all happy. And then we'll go ahead and put some blocks down here. And this is where um, our pillager is going to be standing back in here. And this is where the trap door is going to go. So I wanna go ahead and make a little path out this direction so we can get our pillager in here and um, then we are all set. So, uh, see how that guy is like that right there? That is because I didn't stagger the beds. That's why we don't wanna line them up like that. So you actually wanna have the middle one kinda of go back one more. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that on both sides and then I will be back once that's done because um, we we need them all to go through a sleep cycle, I think. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, see, this, this is right. Uh, so we need to have it staggered like that so they don't kind of get off alignment when they're right next to each other and take up all, like two, two people takes up three beds. So this makes it so each one can sleep. And they'll pop up right here so they'll be able to work during the day. They all have their professions now. Um, so as soon as we introduce uh, somebody who is a bad guy, we're gonna start getting golems spawning. So I actually think before we bring down our um, our dudes, let's go ahead and uh, finish the spawn areas for our golems. So for this, what we're gonna do is we're going to extend this out, um, I think, one more maybe? No, I think we'll just, it's a good question actually, how I'm gonna do this. Um, let me think about this for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I, I derped on the design here. So what I did was I was kind of combining a couple to make sure that I had enough space uh, vertically here to accommodate the iron farm and um, I kind of forgot my measurements a little bit. 
So modifying on the fly, this is totally a Minecraft thing to do. We are combining a old design of a um, iron farm by having a giant square and this won't affect the spawns that much actually. Um, the only thing that it could possibly do because it is larger is slow down the time that it takes the golems to actually get into the fire and disappear. So it may be slightly slower. Um, we'll have to see how that works. But uh, basically what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be one giant square all the way around here. I'm gonna fill it in, uh, put some lighting blocks in it as well so we um, just have it nice and lit up, up here. And then uh, put glass around the outside uh, on these layers right here on both sides. And um, then I'll put the water down and um, I'll go ahead and, and do that as kind of like uh, little quick cuts. So you can see the progress there. But uh, so we're basically doing a, um, a design that is um, a 19 by 19 square, essentially. So it's, it's eight, um, actually it's a little bit larger than that. Um, I think it's actually a 21 by 21 because when you include the, the walls there, but you need eight, eight blocks starting from there with the water flowing down into the three by three hole. So I'll go ahead and do those quick cuts and I'll be back once that's done. Okay, before we put the water down, um, we have to just do a couple things really crystal clear on this because if you don't, it turns us into a giant pond and we don't want that. So um, in each corner, we need to put a block like this that we will take out after we put a water uh, source down on top of this, but we don't wanna do that just yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, two buckets of water down um, with a gap in between each one like that. So in between where we put those down, this is an infinite water source now. So we can use that to fill up our buckets again. And in the corners, you want to skip. So we're gonna skip the one right next to this block and put water down there. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side like that. And whatever you do, do not put water down on this block, this block, or these blocks because it will turn this entire thing into a pond. So let's come back to our infinite water supply here, grab two more, and we'll put our water on top like that and get our block back. So this will reach to these corners. And as we go down here, so we can go ahead and uh, let's fill this back up again real quick. Um, as long as we put them like that, it'll be fine. Like this, this is enough to carry it over. And we just don't wanna grab the one right there. We wanna grab in the middle of two of these blocks and then we come over, put one down, grab in the middle, put one down, grab in the middle, and we just work our way over this way um, until we get to another corner. And before we get too far, we're gonna go ahead and put another block down. And remembering that we're not gonna put it in this block right here, we're gonna put another source down right there, grab, put a source down right here, grab one more time, put a water source down, and then take this block out like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this on this side as well, but that is how you make it. So the water will actually reach just the edge and it'll push all the golems that spawn down into this little pit here um, without turning this entire thing into a pond. I've done that twice on iron farm builds before and um, it's not fun to get rid of all of the water then and then go back and put this in. So just remember to, to do that step right there. Okay, I'll be back in a second. And there you have it, the water's flowing all the way around in this square where there are no gaps and it'll push the golems down in here. Um, like I said, ideally I would have made this a little bit smaller so it was a, a, a strong water stream that was pushing them down faster as they spawned, um, but I don't think it's going to affect our spawn rates um, all that much. Uh, it won't be as efficient as it could have been, but you know what? Um, after getting as far as you go along, <laughs> you don't want to tear it all down. So we're just going to go with what we have. This should work absolutely fine for us. Okay, so now as soon as we bring our pillagers down, which we'll do next, uh, we'll get golems spawning, um, hopefully. And we want to have this kill chamber finished. So we'll go ahead and we'll add the lava up here, close this off, and um, then we will be able to uh, 
make sure that we have all of our golems um, destroyed and producing while we're finishing the build. And the way that you want to do this is you put the lava down above these um, signs. And you want to make sure you back out pretty quick here. And let's go ahead and seal this up like that. It won't come down to this level. We, we probably would have been fine in there, but it's um, just a precaution. Now the golems will come down this chute, fall into the lava. They will die and they will drop iron and poppies into these chests. So let's go ahead and go get our pillagers and uh, bring them down into these areas. And then we'll set up the hopper clock with a scare mechanism and uh, then we'll be done. Okay. Okay, and here we have both of our pillagers down and they are scaring the bejesus out of our little villagers. They're running around. Now what will happen is these guys will get like almost like a fear fatigue and they'll stop spawning golems if they can't use their workstations and go to sleep. So we need to have a, a method for them to go to sleep um, through short little periods. So I actually want to get this guy to go back a little bit more and then I'm going to drop this um, other block down here. And this is one way you can use it to um, push guys around. See, that moves them all the way back there. And then when I put this down, it shuts the water off. So um, that that is handy, that works. So let's go ahead and uh, go down here. Because we're gonna put the uh, hopper clock on the other side, just so it looks neater when we're looking in here. Um, these iron farms are loud. <laughs> Very loud. See, they, uh, they're they spawning two golems at once, which is good. And uh, they're coming down. They're hitting that uh, blade of lava and dying. And we'll look in a second uh, after I get the hopper clock built because I want to make sure that we have uh, everything running properly before we uh, check to see how we're doing on the spoils of, uh, f spoils of war or iron farming, as it were. All right, so let's go ahead and build this back over. And I think what, actually what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this one out right here, like that, and I'm gonna put slabs down like this. And we're gonna build slabs coming over here as well. I think, yeah, starting right here, we'll leave a one gap space and we'll connect it up with the other side too. And this will give us a, a good outline for uh, where we need our build to be take that out put two down like that let's go ahead and take the dirt out as well don't need the dirt there any longer all right so we're gonna put the hopper clock back here and let's give ourselves some space we need what is it one two three four five six six spaces i think so one two three four five and one more over like this. Okay, now that we have this like this, let's go ahead and um, we'll go put our trap doors down first. I should have done this before. We need them facing so they flip up this way. So we might have to take this out like that and see if we can kind of hit it in the corner like this. There, like that. So we flip it up. See, he blo he's blocked by that, and they can go to sleep or they can work. It depends what time of day it is, uh, but allows them to kind of chill out and relax. And we'll go ahead and put that one back. And then when we hook it up to redstone, then of course they'll uh, those will shut and they'll start panicking. And uh, it's uh, it's hijinks and hilarities, man, scaring villagers over and over again. So I'll put this down in the corner, flip it up, and we'll just leave that like that for now. Let them chill out for a little bit while we build the rest of this hopper clock. Okay, so a hopper clock is kind of what it sounds like. It's a um, hoppers that uh, make a timed kind of signal, a red, redstone pulse. And um, what you do is you have a hopper facing into a hopper. So we're going to have a hopper facing into a hopper like this. Um, we need 
get rid of this block right here. And then we crouch click into the hopper with another hopper facing it like that. So they should make that kind of look. And this is going to pass material back and forth uh, constantly. And so facing each one of these, uh, we want a comparator, a redstone comparator. And it looks like, so it has like the, uh, the two facing here like that. So you kind of need to face it away like that. And we need a block behind it like so. And then we're going to have sticky pistons moving stuff back and forth. So, um, did I do that right? I guess we'll see in a second, won't we? All right, so we're gonna have a sticky piston, and the sticky pistons are built with um, a piston and a slime ball, and so we have two sticky pistons now. Let's see, do I put them this way? Is that right? Nope, the other way. Okay, I'm gonna do this one down here like this. That's, oh, and we have one facing this way like that. And then we have a piece of redstone dust behind each one like this. And then as these get signals uh, in them, the comparator will say, hey, there's something in there. And it'll turn this on and shove the redstone block over here and then back and forth like that. So let's go ahead and put our redstone block down that. And in between here, Let's go ahead and try to put in 32 into this one right here and uh, see if we can get this thing to work properly. Now when this empties, it should switch this over to here. Let's see if it works. There it goes. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to have a redstone line coming from here and we're going to split it like this, come up here into here. And this will open and shut these little doors. So we'll watch this here in a second when it turns off. There. See, it scares them all. They pop back up again. And then it'll switch back over and power the signal, flip this up, and then they'll be able to relax and do their own little work again. And this will keep this so it keeps cycling and we don't have to worry about them um, not being able to do their activities uh, with the crafting tables or uh, going to sleep at night. So that is a hopper clock right there. Pretty simple design. Two sticky pistons, uh, a redstone block in the middle, two hoppers facing each other, two comparators, two blocks that conduct redstone and two redstone dust on either side. You just have to make sure the red redstone block is in place uh, go ahead and drop 32 blocks in. Uh, if you want the signal shorter, it's less blocks. If you want the signal longer, it's more blocks. But I think 32 works out pretty well uh, to keep the cycle going on a regular basis. And let's go ahead and clean up and see how much we've gotten just from this very short uh, period of time that we've been uh, building this. Okay, let's take a look real quick here. Oh, we got 57 um, iron and... Uh, Nine poppies, that's pretty good. 30 and uh, over a stack there and a piece of dirt that fell through from our previous thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and grab all the iron real quick here on the poppies and we'll put it in the center one so we can see what we what we got so far. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, we've been here for like 30 minutes working on this and uh, we have uh, almost two and a half stacks. <laughs> that's crazy. And then we can go ahead and take the poppies and uh, use them for composting as well. So hopefully we'll get some more spawns coming down here. But yeah, that is an iron farm in a nutshell. Um, probably went a little bit longer than I, I planned on for this video, uh, mainly because I, I kind of derped on this uh, platform design up here. But all in all, I will say this was successful. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and would like to see more in the future from the Dad's Guide channel, click that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell so you don't miss an upcoming episode. And if you've enjoyed seeing this underground pillager powered iron farm, please consider leaving a like. It really helps the channel grow. And please, I love making improvements and showing other people how to improve on designs. So if you have any comments on how to improve uh, on this iron farm, uh, please leave a comment. I love hearing from people who love Minecraft as much as I do. So until next time, 
Bye for now.